ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲ ಜೈನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಸಪ್ತಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸೂತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪಥೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿವ್ ಬಿನ್ ರಿಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಾಧು ನಿಂದಾ ಓರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಸಾಧು ಆ ನಿಂದಾ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ಓರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅಸ್ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಲೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಲರೆಂಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೀ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ಅವಾಯ್ಡ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಫೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ನಾಮ ಅಪರಾಧ and we should be very careful against making offenses to sadhus who is a sadhu on the utam adhikari platform everyone is a sadhu so we should offer our respects to to all but evidently we are not on that platform we are just a kanishta adhikari a beginner in this process or maybe some kanishta madhyama and we are sincerely repentant for the offenses that have been made in the past and the aphorism often used by sincere sadhus is uh, please forgive any offense i may have made unto your lotus feet knowingly or unknowingly and this is a subtle point since krishna does not uh, punish too severely for offenses made unknowingly but offenses made knowingly will be punished and the severity of the punishment will be up to krishna alone because he is the supreme personality of godhead he has uh, he's parameshwar he's the supreme controller and only shrimati radharani can fully control him he's purchased by the love of his bhaktas also but only radha can fully control krishna hence she is parameshwari she is the controller of the supreme controller and some people have some sadhus have more affection for radha some have more affection for krishna but if you're in the sangha of uh, these supreme forms of bhagavan then we are under their protection and require no other protection from any law enforcement agency and this is the point which was made in a nice article about kshatriya dharma 
and Ahimsa, which is the first Yama in the Eightfold Path of Ashtanga Yoga. Ahimsa, non-violence. So what does non-violence mean? Does it mean that we all become total pacifists? Well, if you're a Brahmana, then you should uh, be so truthful that you can reveal your uh, whole being, even to an enemy. But those of us who are not Brahmanas may retain their uh, integrity by prayer, uh, by humble submission to Guru, humble submission to God, Krishna, <coughs> and chant Hare Krishna and be happy because ultimately nothing out there is going to harm you. Everything that happens is for our own good. Everyone gets what they need at the time. And what we do is ultimately controlled. It's not um, that we have total independence. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays <coughs> in the Shikshastaka in the 8th verse that um, Krishna, you are fully independent and can do whatever you like. Nevertheless, you are the Lord of my life. So this is the esoteric uh, and very difficult to understand of Chaitanya, a leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is incredibly grave and he, the re, we've discussed briefly a little bit about the reasons why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came but we should focus on the sadhya of Chaitanya leela, not so much the sadhana or you could say we focus on the sadhana in order to achieve the sadhya what is the sadhya of chaitanya leela that is to chant and dance in ecstatic bliss in it's been prophesied that this sankirtan movement of chaitanya leela will uh, spread to every town and village in the whole world which it is doing because in a more mundane sense this is Kali Yuga this is the, the Yuga of Kali the black one and this is sometimes this Yuga is sometimes called the age of quarrel and hypocrisy, which it evidently is. Yet, within this dark iron age of Kali, there is a golden uh, age, the golden age of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, by taking shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan mission and chanting the holy names of God, we will experience divine rapture and bliss in service by chanting the holy name. It's very easy to do. It's, this Bhakti Yoga process is not difficult like practicing uh, yoga asanas can be although you practicing yoga asanas is blissful at every moment also there may be some pain and yes there may be some pain in the bhakti yoga process also but generally it's a lot easier to sit in a comfortable position with your mala and chant Hare Krishna. There are different kinds of malas for different 
uh, Sampradayas. This is a, a Rudraksha Mala for chanting Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. And this is a Kanti Mala for wearing around your neck made of Tulsi wood. Tulsi Maharani is the form in this world of Vrinda Devi, who is the caretaker of Vrindavan Forest in Brajagoku in Goloka Vrindavan. And she is highly worshipable. And by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. On uh, Tulsi beads, one mantra per bead. Or chanting Om Namah Shivaya if you're a Shaivite on Rudraksha beads. Or chanting Om Mani Padme Hum on uh, Rosewood beads if you're a Buddhist. Or any other form of chanting will transcend the mind because mantra literally means manas triate uh, manas being mind triate being transcending so by chanting we can transcend <coughs> our own minds but really the brain is in the mind, not the mind in the brain. So how will we transcend the mind? Well, it, ultimately we can't fully because reality is transcendental. It, it goes on and on. No one uh, person except for Krishna can have all the uh, full opulences of reality poured into their tiny brain they require uh, a guru this is the necessity of guru Sri Guru is one and there's different forms of guru there's the Matapita guru the mother and father everyone has and there is the Vatna production guru the one who shows you the path. There's the Shiksha Guru who gives instruction and the Diksha Guru who gives you initiation. And the Chaitya Guru who is in the heart. So which of these Gurus is the most important? The most important Guru is practically the Shiksha Guru because the instructions that he gives are nectar and if we are uh, surrendered then we'll accept these instructions and follow them implicitly. Srila Prabhupada said that his greatest uh, route to success, the reason for his success was because he never deviated even an inch from his guru's instructions. His guru was Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is a great, great Mahabhagavat of uh, Navadvip and Radhakund. And he chanted a billion names, over a billion names, in the course of his life. He remained the Naishtika Brahmachari throughout his his life and wrote many great books and opened many great mats or temples all over the world. It's often uh, that Srila Prabhupada is considered to be the one who brought Krishna consciousness to the West and he did but also Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur should receive uh, credit for his efforts in spreading 
Krishna consciousness worldwide because it, he even sent um, sannyasis, brahmacharis, to um, London and the uh, the some Western Londoners were attracted to this <coughs> Va uh, Vaishnav culture and way of life and they said how can we become a Brahmana and, they, and the preachers said uh, well you have to give up eating meat you have to give up your frivolous activities playing sports and so on and so on and they said impossible <laughs> impossible so impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary and it may be may seem impossible at times to be a bhakta to be uh, to make advancement in on the path back to the godhead because of our anatas uh, unnecessary uh, unnecessary endeavors actions but we should try and focus on our strengths try and see the good in other people and not the the bad use your talents in Krishna's service in the beginning it may be good to give up all material possessions even and become a tyagi and travel and learn and never stop learning there's this movement in the west epithet lifelong learner so we can all learn from that and, and remain learners never stop learning even the, the greatest uh, Bhagavat devotees um, they don't stop learning that they, they still study because there's always more as we've mentioned reality is transcendental it goes on and on I remember when I was a, a young initiate uh, coming to uh, meet first meeting the devotees because first there must be shraddha there must be faith then comes and then when that faith develops it develops into sadhu sangha that we we get the association of sadhus and we were fortunate to spend quite some time with his holiness dirashanta das goswami but even right near the beginning when uh, we'd been on a yatra, I perhaps impudently chastised him, but his reaction was surprising. He didn't say um, that uh, he didn't bite my head off. He said that um, even I require preaching too sometimes. So we should welcome uh, the suggestions and constructive criticism from others humbly uh, there may still be some raga dvesh um, some acceptance and re rejection that's the imperative and prerogative of the individual but the more we open ourselves to the world because the world wants to know us, <laughs> it wants to know us all so badly, then we will receive more mercy. Um, it's not that this effort is egoistic, it's, it, it can only happen after we've received the mercy of Shiv and our false ego has been eradicated our ego about who we are this is called in some circles as uh, finding one's true will and 
we have this takes a long time. Some of the most interesting people uh, around don't know what they're doing with their lives. But focus is is very laudable to focus our efforts in a certain field of activity. Krishna speaks about this in the Bhagavad Gita about the field and the knower of the field and the best place to start is between is the knowledge of I am not this body there's some deep realization that a dhira, a sober man, is not bewildered by a change of body. Why? Because the body is not him. It's not his body. It, and we should have this attitude in our own lives that I am not this body. This body belongs to Krishna. This body is a temple. And what we put into the body should be pure but what is purity well in different sampradayak schools organizations there are rules and regulations to help us on our journey uh, back to the spiritual world the chintamani dham and we may not be able to follow all rules and regulations ascribed to us by our shiksha gurus but what our diksha guru says <coughs> is very uh, necessary if we don't deviate from what those who have in actually initiated us then we will have great success in practicing our bhajan and what the Diksha Gurus usually say is chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna every day and be happy and be good. And this will make a, a better world for all of us. Sometimes difficulties arise and we slip and we fall, but our strength lies in rising every time we fall. Fall, stand, fall, stand, but don't remain fallen. That's the important message. And this message, I understand, may not be applicable or palatable, but it depends on what you want to be, like we said, finding your true will. You may not seek continual self-initiation, or you may find in yourself the strength to maintain some individualism. Krishna doesn't want us to become robots all trying to hurry Krishna, hurry Krishna. We want uh, vibrance and uh, illumination in our lives, which will come through uh, perseverance and study and will rise and fall on the waves of the Bhakti Saga, the Anandam Bhudi, Anandam Bhudi Vardhanam Pratipadam, that will become sailors on the ocean of the Bhakti Ocean, not that we're drowning although drowning in bliss is rather uh, attractive and if you're chanting Hare Krishna then you may be drowning you may be drowning in anatas and you may be drowning in great and fervent happiness as Srila Govinda Maharaj used to say are you not drowning? are you not drowning? Ah. Unfortunate, unfortunate. So let us all chant our Diksha mantras 
and become blissful and happy in our lives and in our pursuits of uh, whatever they may be and rest easy Hare Krishna